Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit, and welcome back to another video. And as part of the Ask Split Suit a Question series, a bunch of people asked hand history questions, and this one actually came privately via YouTube. And by Joy Joseph says, Hi James, enjoy all your videos. I have a hand which happened today in a nine-handed casino 1-2 no limit game. What would have been the better play here? Okay, so in this hand, hero raises with ace king from under the gun, ends up getting a caller ends up getting another caller, and in this situation, MP1 is new to the table, so we don't have any reads yet, and the big blind is fishy and tends to overvalue top pair. He's also donked a couple of times in the past, and when he does, tends to continue firing. So in this situation, totally fine opening ace-king, of course, size-wise is definitely a little bit on the large side of the spectrum, but in many 1-2 games, this is actually a size that I will choose, so I'm not gonna complain about it too much in a live environment. And I'm going here, face the donk bet, which of course we're not too shocked about given the information we had on the big blind, and Hero decides to just call. Okay, so before we continue any further, I actually want to back up two quick ticks and talk about this spot for a quick moment. So we notice there's roughly 50 in the middle, about 150 back with MP1 makes about a 3 SPR pot, with the big blind roughly a 4 SPR pot, and between 3 and 6 is my gray zone, which means I'm typically going to take over pairs to the felt and top pairs to the felt, but in the gray zone it's kind of one of those where eh, sometimes I will and eh, sometimes I'll be a pinch more protective. But in this situation, when we're in the gray zone, and one of the players has a fish, then I'm feeling very, very confident taking things like top air, top kicker to the felt. So in a situation like this, when the big blind donks out, I'm typically going to be in a very committed mindset where it's, okay, I'm going to get my stack inside. It's just, how am I going to do it? Now, some players may flat here and say, well, I'm going to flat and try to get MP1 to continue as well. And he's new to the table. We don't have obviously any information on him, but it's one of those where if we call, is he really going to continue with like sevens, eights, nines every single time? And even if so, there's not a ton of combos of that anyway. So I also ask myself, if I raise, will he ever fold something like King X, if he has King Queen or King Jack or King 10 suited or that sort of stuff? Because he's new to the table, I can't say one way or the other, but I'm going to use my default one-two player pool assumption, and that's that he's not going to fold something like top air, particularly for his stack size. He didn't buy in for a full stack, and I tend to assume that better players will, and $150 is a really odd stack to buy in for, so that doesn't lead me to believe that he's particularly good. So ultimately, I'm just in a mindset of, if I raise, I think I can still get a lot of value from either player. Yes, I'm probably going to blow out things like 7s and 8s, but whatever. And I'm really just trying to hyper-target things like King X that obviously we crush and maybe some things like 7-8 or 4-3 or that sort of stuff. Now, there of course are some combos that beat us, but there aren't very many. There's a set of six, a set of five, so there's six total combos of those. There's six five suited, which there's two combos left of that. And if he has something like king six, then he can have something like king nine. So I'm really not worried here. I want to raise, try to get as much value in as possible. And the big blind has donk bed in the past and has tended to continue firing, which is great. But I just want to get a lot of money going in right this moment. And yeah, you could let people bluff off, but if it's a deeper SPR, that's different. Or it's a situation where you don't want to, say, stack off right this moment. But I most certainly do want to stack off right this moment. So I would just raise this up to something like 80, get the rest in as quickly as possible. But in this exact situation, hero called, end up facing a shove fold and hero decided to fold as well so backing up one quick tick i really don't understand the fold here so at this point we're getting roughly two to one on a call and i don't see any reason to think that we're behind enough of the time now by joy joseph did say in the write-up that this was an insta shove from mp1 but that still doesn't lead me to believe that he only has sets in two pairs. I just don't think we can say that because the second we can introduce something like, say, King Queen or King Jack or King Ten suited, you know, any sort of overvaluing of something like top pair, it's like criminal, 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 criminal to fold here. So I think that this fold is way too nitty, way too tight, and you just can't put someone on only the nuts in a situation like this, particularly when there just aren't a ton of nut combos anyway. I mean, there's, again, eight combos of sets, realistic sets, and two pair with the 6-5 suited, 
And again, with like even something like King Queen, there's two unseen kings, four unseen queens, so eight combos of that. I mean, there's just a ton of combos of those other hands. And if you could have something like seven eight suited, there's four more combos of that. If you could have four three suited, there's four more combos of that. So folding here is really, really bad in my opinion. And just let someone like this off the hook. And even worse, Hero ended up folding and showing that he had ace king, and that's just something that you don't want to do. You don't ever want to give someone information that you can make big folds like that, not even that it's a correct big fold. But if you're advertising to people that you're going to fold something like ace king here, then they're just going to punish you, absolutely punish you, because if you're not calling with ace king, what are you calling with? Right, so it just allows him to bluff at you with pure impunity, and that's obviously something that we don't want to let people do. So by Joy Joseph, thank you very much for the great hand, and if you or anyone else has a Parker-related hand or question, feel free to leave it on our Google Plus page. I'll leave a link for that in the description box, and also please make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this type of video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there, and happy grinding.